So uh, Tanner Blocks will be our next presenter. Go ahead and share your screen with us. And he will be presenting today uh, a 3D printable ultrasound phantom for subclavian central lines. Awesome. Well, as Corey said, uh, I'm Tanner Blocks, and my project is a 3D printable ultrasound phantom for subclavian central lines. Uh, to start with, uh, some quick acknowledgments. I would like to thank my capstone committee, my mentor, Dr. Tim Tran, my chair, Ernesto Salcedo, and my third, Corey Bunny Uton. Uh, I'd also like to thank the Modern Human Anatomy Program for their support, as well as InWorks, which provided a lot of support in printing my 3D models. To start with, what is a central line? Well, a central line is a large catheter inserted into a large vein. Uh, it's a very common procedure done in the ICU and throughout the hospital. Uh, is typically used for like long-term catheterization of the vein and allows physicians to do large doses of medication, hydration, nutrition, and to monitor uh, vitals. So why ultrasound? So typically or traditionally this procedure is done with the landmark technique where essentially you make an L with your thumb and pointer and then put it in your sternal notch and along the clavicle where your pointer lines up is approximately where the subclavian vein is. Uh, obviously, this is much easier to find with an ultrasound machine, as you're less guessing and you can actually find it. Uh, it's significantly safer when done under ultrasound and is becoming more prominent in use. Uh, about 46% of physicians use ultrasound to do SCCVCs. Uh, the problem with this is that it's not a procedure that's commonly taught in medical school. It's often left to attendings to teach this to their trainees. And so more resources could be available to allow attendings to teach this to, to physicians before they take it to live patients. So current resources are either, are these ultrasound phantoms that fall in a range of about really cheap perishable models like this kidney made out of gelatin that doesn't last very long, but it's you can make it at home and it does a good enough job or these really expensive professionally done models like this central line training machine, which teaches the exact same procedure we're trying to do here, but it costs in the upwards of thousands of dollars. So here we believe we could make a ultrasound phantom that kind of bridges this gap uh, by using segmented CT data and 3D printing techniques. So how did we do this? Uh, to start, I segmented 3D or CT data using 3D slicer. I segmented the entire thoracic cage and a couple of cervical vertebra. Uh, this isn't our entire region of interest, but we figured we could start broadly and then reduce the scope of the 3D model. So I implant, or imported this 3D slicer model into Blender and used it to segment down to our region of interest. So this is the upper right shoulder region, T1, T2, the first two ribs. Uh, the clavicle and the sternum. I, I also added annotations to show where we'd guide a latex tube. So the subclavian, and then we initially planned for the latex tubing to also simulate the IJ. From there, uh, we kind of have this making process where we printed our 3D model. Uh, so I printed this at Inworks using PLA material, which is a plastic. Uh, we bought this ballistics chest mold. So this is used by law enforcement to make uh, giant ballistics gel models for testing uh, ballistics vests, but we don't need the entire chest. So in this red box, we segmented it down to just this right upper shoulder region using down here cardboard and this really high resistant tape called captain tape. Uh, we then lowered our model. So this is the back of the model lowered into the mold using craft wiring. And then we placed in latex tubing and set that all in ballistics gel. And once you kind of let that set and then flip it open, you get this whole right shoulder model where you can see implanted our 3D printed materials and the latex tubing. And then I put this cartoon ultrasound probe to show roughly where an ultrasound probe would go when using this model. So how does it appear? So on the left here, we have a live patient. And on the right, we have our ultrasound phantom model. So you can see the subclavian vein in the long axis coming through both of these models in both approximately the same angle and in the same relationship with our clavicle. 
Uh, the one big thing that we wanted to include but couldn't fit in this model was the pleural line. So a big complication with this procedure is piercing through the subclavian vein and hitting the pleurat, but the depth of the model made it so you couldn't see anything be roughly below the subclavian vein. And so how did this end up? So we did make the model. Uh, we developed a protocol for copying the model. Uh, we calculated the cost of the model. So the model cost roughly $450 to produce, which includes about the $200 you had to spend on the giant chest mold. So once you have the chest mold, it costs about $200 to make the model each time and they're reproducible. A lot of the latex tubing and 3D printed materials can be reused. Uh, one thing, things that can be improved upon upon the model, uh, one was the Plura, uh, you just couldn't interface it properly to get it to appear right under ultrasound in time and more significant soft tissues. So currently there's just kind of empty space above the subclavian vein, but finding a substitute for soft tissues to take place of the pectoral muscle could be really helpful in the future. Uh, the pandemic prevented testing. We were originally gonna test this model with the anesthesiology department at UC Health, but unfortunately about two days before we were planning to do the testing, everything got shut down. So hopefully in the future, once everything begins to reopen, we can circle back and do that testing. Uh, any questions? Thanks so much, Tanner. That was a great talk. So I'm looking in the chat stream. We have a question for you. So why did you use rubber tubing to simulate the subclavian vein? Was this informed by the literature? Uh, this was both informed by literature and by our own testing. So my mentor, Dr. Tim Tran, has previously made ultrasound phantoms for just kind of like basically just a latex tube in a block of ballistics gel to just see if it looks like uh, veins. And so we kind of started this project around that idea. So latex tubing was always the material of choice. Okay, great. Uh, any, we have a little more time for another question. If there's any more questions in the chat stream. Okay, so another question, was the tube filled with fluid or air, and does it matter? Uh, it does matter, so it, before, so we used fluid, so I had a hand pump system that will allow you to like basically pump from a bottle of water through the uh, mold and then it would stay there. Uh, without filling it with fluid, uh, the latex tubing collapses on itself, which kind of actually simulates how a vein would, but so you would get just like a smushed line through the model without filling it with fluid, but we used a hand pump. Okay, great. So we're gonna transition to our next talk. Um, Tanner, if you wouldn't mind unsharing your screen. Thank you.